So um, this is the final lightning talk of the day. Um, I'm going to be talking about some Git stuff relating to Jenkins. Um, yeah. So very quick introduction. Uh, I'm, uh, as you may have seen the talk this, this morning, I'm an Android developer. I've been living in Germany for about five years now. Although, as you can hear, I'm uh, originally from Scotland. Uh, and I work in Cologne now, uh, very nice city, for a company called Iosphere, where we work on mobile apps. And so this talks a bit about uh, our experiences with Git, uh, the Git plugin, and some of the stuff we do with it. So the first question is with Git is what to build. So the very first thing we see, um, this is the most basic config you can have. Um, although I've already actually expanded this advanced section to see the name and rest spec. Um, so what we have here, um, what Jenkins uses to, to build, it chooses uh, three different parameters. So these are the, the rest spec, the branches to, to build, and the choosing strategy. So these are the, the default values, which in Jenkins will choose all of, download all of the branches from the repository. Uh, by default, it will only build master. Um, although you can also uh, enter simple wildcards, um, like feature. If you're using Git flow, for example, you can say, OK, I only want to build branches that start with feature slash whatever. Um, so what, do these, what can we actually do with these? So ref specs, um, they look a bit kind of cryptic, but they're essentially saying, if you've got this set of um, Git references on the server, I want to download them to my local copy. Um, so by default, Jenkins says, OK, I want to download all branches, all heads. And then you can um, use the branch specifier to say, OK, I only want to build master. Or you can explicitly retrieve only a single branch. Um, one thing that we do quite often is to retrieve only tags. So this is something I talked about this morning, where we build, for example, a beta version of our Android app only when you push uh, a git tag called beta slash whatever. And the way you can do this in Jenkins is in your ref spec is to um, enter this plus ref tags beta slash blah, 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 blah. And then have a branch specifier that says, OK, once you've downloaded this from Git, only build things that match this pattern. So ignore branches, ignore everything. Um, just build a tag, for example. Um, also, some tools like GitHub, also Garrett, implement kind of special references. Uh, so, for example, GitHub has a thing called ref slash pull. And there you can get all of your pull requests. So, for example, you can kick off a Jenkins job automatically when there's a new pull request. Um, and it will then ignore the branches, for example. So you won't be building every time there's a new push, only, time there's a new, only every time there's a new pull request, for example. Um, so the third thing I mentioned was this uh, build choosing strategy. So this, this is the quite complex list of additional behaviors that the Git plugin has. Um, some of them don't really quite make sense, perhaps. There's, I think there's three different clean options in there for some reason. Um, and there's a couple of options that are now obsolete. But the one we're talking about here is uh, the strategy for choosing what to build. So this is kind of hidden away. Um, and you get this drop-down, which has two different uh, options. So by default, you get the default option, which says, for example, here, if we have the default rest spec, and we say, I want to uh, build release slash whatever, and we have these four branches, uh, release one, release two, and some feature branches, whatever. If you're using the default choosing strat strategy, it will say, well, OK, I will apply this wildcard directly. Uh, I will el eliminate the feature and the bug fix, and you'll just get these. The other option, which is in this uh, dropdown, is called inverse. And inverse does, well, the opposite of default. So in this case, you can say, uh, I only want to build things that aren't on the release branch. This, so this is quite handy sometimes if you want to build uh, feature branches, or if you want to make sure that, for example, pushing to a release doesn't build a certain branch. So this is quite handy when you don't have, uh, maybe you don't have a naming policy for branches like some people do um, with Git flow. Um, and this is also a, an extension point in Jenkins called build chooser. So you can actually, actually implement your own build chooser, which is what um, the Garrett plugin does for code review, for example. 
and then you get an extra option in this dropdown. So now that we've told Jenkins very precisely what we want to build, the question is when to build it. So as a, 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 a very wise man once said, polling must die. Jenkins, you should not have your Jenkins configured that it's every minute asking the Git repository, is there a new change? Is there a new change? For a long time now, um, it's been built in that you can get your repository to tell Jenkins, hey, there's a new change, check it out. Um, and so rather than having this delay, this, you know, this, instead of saying, I'm going to check my repository every minute or every five minutes, you can see instantly and get fast feedback um, that there's been a change and you start, start building your, your build. So this can be set up automatically for quite a, lot, for quite a few different um, source control providers, for example, GitHub. There's a plugin where you give it to your GitHub credentials or a GitHub API token, and it will automatically go and set up all of the webhooks on the GitHub um, website for you. So that's quite practical. Um, of course, you also have to have the poll SEM option enabled, um, just so this works. The other thing you can do, uh, which I find is quite handy, is to build nightly, but not every night. Only build if there is change made, it, made to this project during the day. Otherwise, we're just you know, sending out emails for no reason or wasting resources. So here you can enter um, this really nice hashed syntax that Jenkins has to say, I want to build sometime between 3 and 5 a.m. I don't really care when, just sometime during the night. Um, but ask the SEM if there are any changes during the day. And you should also ignore post commit hooks. So that says, even if I've got these GitHub web hooks coming in automatically during the day, I don't care. I'm just waiting until nighttime to check if there's any changes. Um, so that is what and when to build. So the question is how it actually gets cloned. So one recommendation is to use the credentials part of the Git plugin, which has been there for quite a few releases now. This avoids having to copy the, all of your SSH credentials onto every slave and making sure that they're consistent across all machines. This will automatically accept the SSH host key for you, um, and it just, it just really simplify, simplifies your credential management for logging into Git. Um, the other thing from this long list of advanced behaviors we saw was something called advanced clone behaviors, and this is what it says. Um, various things that aren't normally necessarily needed for cloning your repository, um, but yeah, they're there if you want to. So, for example, ch shallow clone, uh, we've got timeout. Uh, I, think, I, I think by default there isn't a timeout for, for git clone. So there you can see, it. okay, if it's still cloning after 10 minutes, just give up. So shallow clone um, fetches only the very latest commit um, from your git repository. So there's no history, so you don't spend a long time downloading years of history for your git project if you know that you only want the very latest commit. So that's quite handy. The other option there, um, use this reference repo. Um, so that's a slightly not so well known uh, parameter to the git clone command. So essentially it's equivalent to using git clone minus minus reference. And well, when I say equivalent to, it's because the Jenkins plugin doesn't actually execute a git clone. It first creates a, an empty repository and then runs a git fetch. Um, but in any case, running a reference, so this XYZ you see here, is a local directory on your, your build machine. And the second part, of, of course, is the, remo the remote URL to your Git repository. So what Jenkins, or what Git will do, is if you, re if you supply this reference repository, this allows Git to fetch all of the objects, so all of the, the objects that tell Git, you know, all of the changes that have been made. This can fetch them from local disk instead of going from the network. So this saves um, time from downloading, it saves space, um, so this can make your, your clones very fast. Um, of course, the reference repository should, on local disk should be kept up to date, otherwise cloning is just going to take longer. So this is kind of what things look like at the moment um, with Jenkins if you're using this, uh, the webhooks that we talked about. So you push your code as normal to GitHub or wherever, GitHub will, GitHub will then send a webhook to Jenkins, and Jenkins then asks GitHub, hey, I heard there's changes. Is that right? Or what are the changes? 
Um, so the reference repository doesn't really come into it in this case. So uh, what we've been doing at Iosphere for the past few months is running um, a slightly different setup where we insert a proxy between the remote repository and between Jenkins. So now we tell GitHub, hey, talk to our proxy here. And when there's a change, it will update this local reference repository. So it will actually mirror the Git repository locally and then forward the information to Jenkins. So we'll say to, we'll say to Jenkins, OK, there's been a change. And it will then, um, use, using this reference uh, repository, will get the changes from disk um, if it's doing a clone, for example. So um, the way that this actually works is a tool um, we built called a very unimaginative name. It's a git webhook proxy. Um, so every time you send a webhook to this proxy, if it's a brand new repository it's never seen before, it will clone that. And it will use this git clone minus minus mirror, which is all built in. Uh, and once it's, so it'll block, and once it's finished, it'll then say to Jenkins, oh, hey, now's the time to go and get that repository. Um, if GitHub comes to the proxy next time, we'll say, ah, I've already checked out, I've already got a mirror of this repository, let me just update it. So repositories are mirrored to a, a path that's in a standard format. So we always use hostname slash username slash repository dot git, for example. Um, so all of our Jenkins jobs have a, cons a consistent configuration about this, where this reference repo is. And this all of these Git mirrors that we have on our local network, they're shared using the, the slave setup plugin between all of, the, all of the different build slaves we have. So every single build slave. We only have one mirror of all of the Git reposit repositories that we use, and they're just shared in the local network via network attached storage. So the slave setup plugin does that, and if ever this fails to occur, or if we get a, a checkout error in one of our Jenkins jobs, we use the build failure, failure, analy build failure analyzer, which tells us, oh, hey, you've got to make sure um, this mirror is up and running. Um, so what are the positives and negatives for this? So the good stuff is, um, from our side, so we have a lot of repositories that are pretty big. They are several hundred megabytes large, and we have a quite often we're creating new slaves, either dynamically or we're creating new jobs. And every time this is going to take us a minute, um, we're running with some kind of pretty slow um, Git server sometimes. So it can take quite a while just to get a new slave up and running or just to get a new job up and running. Or even if you've got problems and you just want to wipe the workspace, you've got to wait time and time and time. So this just reduces this all to a few seconds, which is pretty nice. Um, this tool, this GitHub Git web proxy, um, is, accepts the same formats, the same URL schemes that uh, Jenkins GitHub and uh, Git plugins use. So it understands this. Um, if you go to this the URL slash git slash notify commit, it will understand what that means, uh, and it will parse out the URL and use that to clone the repository. So stuff that's, I don't know whether it's good or it's where it's bad. This is actually not direct, directly integrated into Jenkins. So a lot of things people have been talking about today are Jenkins plugins. This is actually a separate tool that we built. Um, and it was built pretty quickly, and it, but it just kind of works. So it's, it just, it's been working well for us for a few months now. But there are probably things that could be a bit easier. Uh, configuration could possibly be automated, for example, if it was built into Jenkins. So I don't know, there's kind of plus and minuses here. Um, and some improvements could be, um, so while the mirror, using this mirror can really speed up a clone, um, at the moment it doesn't uh, help if you're fetching later updates. This is something that we have seen working. Uh, I have a patch somewhere for the Git plugin, um, but I'll have to see how much sense that makes, and there's some, so maybe some uh, changes that need to be made there. And the last thing is that Git plugins don't use the reference repositories if you have submodules. So we have some apps. We have this 200 megabyte uh, repository, but then we have a ton of other submodules as well, and we don't get the benefit. So there, we've saved a ton of time from the main repository, but still we have to wait for cloning submodules. So yeah, 
So one last thing. So unlike, as I mentioned, unlike uh, most things in Jenkins, it's actually not uh, a plugin. It's not written in Java. It's actually a, a pretty simple project written in Go. Um, if you want to try it out at all, then you just need this one single command line, go get, whatever. Um, then that just comp downloads, compiles, and installs it for you. Uh, then you just run it. You just say minus minus listen port 8000, for example. Then you tell GitHub, OK, hey, I'm listening here on port 8000. And then if you just go to this localhost 8000 slash git notify, this just complete normal Jenkins URL, you'll um, get the normal output from Jenkins. But in the background, it will have mirrored uh, your Git repository for you. Um, yeah, so that's, that's essentially it. So if you have any questions or feedback, or if you want to check out the project or, or get in touch, there's all the information. Um, but yeah, that's it. <laughs>